Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Two movies about Noah's Ark coming out of Hollywood. The Russell Crowe movie is not biblical, but the Ray Comfort movie is. We interview Mark Loy, who works with Ken Ham and the Creation Museum about their big evolution debate with Bill Nye the Science Guy. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. ChristianPost.com reports that Oscar-winning actor Russell Crowe has actually urged the Pope, Francis, to watch his biblical epic movie, Noah, coming out of Hollywood on 28 March. But a Christian evangelist and an, another award-winning filmmaker, Ray Comfort, says that this, the sensational film by Russell Crowe is not and cannot be a biblical adventure and that Christians ought to stay away from that Hollywood fiction. Ray Comfort is instead urging people to come to the version of Noah's Ark that he produced, which this different movie, also about Noah's Ark, does remain faithful to the Bible and that's the one by Ray Comfort. Comfort is slammed, uh, recently slammed the Russell Crowe movie and here's a quote. He said, Russell Crowe has no qualms about sensationalizing the story of Noah in order to make it more profitable. That's their bottom line, it's all about money. But the movie strays so far from the biblical account that it omits its essential message. What is the essential, essential message of Genesis 6 and 7? Ray Comfort says it is God's judgment for man's sin and evil. Hollywood takes a poetic license on the story and further erodes the public perception of the biblical account. He's talking about Russell Crowe's movie, but that is why we, Ray Comfort says, produced our own version of Noah, which looks at him from a different perspective. We reveal 10 undeniable Bible prophecies that link to Noah and show that we today are living in what the Bible calls the last days. A couple of big endorsements for noahthemovie.com. Again, Ray Comfort's website is noahthemovie.com if you wanna preview the good version. And this now is endorsed by people like Ken Ham from Answers in Genesis, who says Ray Comfort's film Noah is a powerful evangelistic tool. Or Eric Hovind, president of Creation Today, says Ray Comfort's film about Noah is inspiring and convicting. Here's what the Bible says in Genesis chapter six. And God looked upon the earth and said, behold, it was corrupt. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence and through them and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So why did God send the flood? Was it to judge mankind for his sin? I think the Bible's pretty clear on this. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus' name that you would forgive us in our generation of repeating the sins of Noah's generation. Father, have mercy on us and restore us to righteousness so we don't face the same judgment and wrath. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, I'm gonna interview Mark Loy of the Creation Museum. You don't wanna miss this. Discerning the spirits that rule our politicians, Dr. Chaps will be right back. As a Christian minister, I believe the Bible and I believe in spiritual gifts. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12 that the gift of discerning of spirits is available to you. The ability to see angels or demons or the Holy Spirit. In fact, I've written two amazing books that I want you to have today. And you can visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org to get either one of these resources. The first is my PhD dissertation on this particular topic. It's called, How to See the Holy Spirit and Angels and Demons. Ignatius of Loyola on the Gift of Discerning of Spirits in Church Ethics. If you want an exciting theology book that's challenging and intellectual, that goes into the classic theology of Ignatius of Loyola, how he was influenced by men like John Cashin and Thomas Akempis, 
how he influenced later theologians like Carl Rahner and Timothy Gallagher, then you will love this resource, maybe for your pastor, or if you're a counselor, or a serious Bible student, this is a theology book and you're gonna love it. Or maybe you want something more fun. I've also written a different book, which is more of a popular book. Uh, it's called The Demons of Barack Obama, and it applies my theology of discerning of spirits to the 44th president of the United States. I used an article written by my friend David Barton on 50 events in his presidency, and I tried to discover, is he being influenced by the Holy Spirit, or by angels, or by maybe some other spirits? What is behind the president? So if you want a popular book that's fun to read, it's available for $20, or if you want an academic book that could be used for serious Bible students, it's available for $35, or maybe you want both of these, they're both available for $50. A donation of any amount will go towards sending these books to you. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org, and get both of these resources for your family. Defending your religious freedom here is Dr. Chaps. Hi, this is Dr. Chaps. Thank you for watching PIJN News. We're here at the NRB convention in Nashville, Tennessee, and today I'm joined by a new friend, Mark Loy, L-O-O-Y, of AnswersInGenesis.org. That's right, Chaps. Answers in Genesis. He works very closely with Ken Ham with the Creation Museum in the suburb of Cincinnati, Ohio. Welcome, Mark. I'm so glad that you're here on the show. Well, Chaps, thank you. I've, I've been following your story for the last few years, and thank you for your boldness in well, proclaiming your faith. Fantastic. So, uh, everybody, I mean, this is a worldwide news event tuned into the Bill Nye versus Ken Ham debate on creationism versus science. And you were, what was your role in that? Right. Well, indeed, Ken Ham, uh, the founder of the Creation Museum, debated Bill Nye, the science guy of TV fame. Uh, that occurred in early uh, February. Ken Ham argued the positive case that the book of Genesis should be taken and accepted as literal history. Of course, Mr. Nye, being a secular humanist, um, uh, gave the opposite argument. And the blessing of this event that was held at the Creation Museum is that we're aware of at least seven million people who watched that uh, debate live and millions other have watched it on C-SPAN or YouTube or on other various websites. And you're the co-founder of Answers in Genesis and the Creation Museum along with Ken Ham and you organized this event uh, you know, you're the business brains behind the operation. How did you make it go viral or was it just the nature of the subject? Well, the history of the Bill Nye-Ken Ham debate goes about a year and a half ago when Bill Nye had posted a YouTube video saying that creation is not appropriate for children to, uh, to learn. So Ken Ham and a couple of our scientists posted their own YouTube rebuttals, if you will. It became an internet uh, phenomenon to the point that an Associated Press reporter uh, was watching these videos and decided to do a story. And in, the, in, in his research, I suggested to the reporter that he contact Mr. Nye and ask Mr. Nye if he'd be willing to debate uh, Ken Ham. Mr. Nye readily agreed, and that historic debate occurred just a few weeks ago. And it was live streamed, you say, into at least 3 million downloads now on YouTube, but 7 million probably watched it live? We're aware of almost uh, 3 million logins live. Now, each login could represent, well, more than two or three people. For example, at Liberty University, 1,500 people met in a hall and watched the live debate, and that's one login. So our best guess is 7 to 8 million people watched the Bill Nye Ken Ham debate on February 4th. So for the benefit of people like me who unfortunately did not tune in, what were they talking about? The Bible versus science, or was it more than that? Well, the question that was debated is creation a viable model of origins in today's modern economic and uh, technological times. Uh, Mr. Nye had been saying uh, for many years that if you're a scientist, you have to be an evolutionist. If you're a creationist and a scientist, then the economy suffers, technology suffered. And what we wanted to do during the debate is to show that there are a number of creationists who are scientists who are doing great work, including Dr. Raymond Damadian, who's the inventor of the MRI scanner, who was shown by Ken Ham in the debate saying, I believe in the Genesis account of origins and I reject evolution. And Ken Ham wanted to show uh, the worldwide audience 
that when it comes to the question of origins, evolution or creation, uh, there's a lot of interpretation involved. Evidence does, does not speak in and of itself, and so Ken wanted people to question what they really thought they believed about evolution. So, you know, my personal understanding, and, and in fact, it's maybe my opinion, you don't have to agree with me, is that evolution is just a theory. And that theory uh, may have some evidence that supports it, but there's a lot of evidence that does not support the theory. Ev evolution is not a scientific fact. Mm. Yeah, in, in fact, it doesn't even rise to the level of a theory. It'd be probably better to say that evolution is a hypothesis uh, or a model. Again, you're dealing with the unobservable past. You dig up dinosaur bones in the ground, but those bones have to be interpreted. Creationists look at the same evidence, come up with different conclusions because we have a different starting point, and that is the Word of God. Evolutionists look at the same evidence of those dinosaur bones, and because they have their already pre-existing worldview, they interpret those bones uh, separately and differently. That was one of the key points that Ken Ham brought up in his debate with Bill Nye. So the, the ultimate, I mean, behind all of the, all the bones and all the scientific analysis by both sides, there's scientists who believe the Bible, there's scientists who don't believe the Bible. The root question is, were we created by an intelligent God? And what is, what is some of the evidence that we were? By the way, I, I'm a former evolutionist. I used to subscribe to the fact, or subscribe to the idea, that uh, we had descended from some ape-like ancestor like Neanderthal man. So I know where the evolutionists are, are, are coming from. But what I did as a, as a new Christian at about the age of 17, I, I looked at scripture for myself to see if there was any room for evolution over billions or millions of years, and I just didn't see it in scripture. Then I turned my attention to the science, and I looked at fields like paleontology, the study of fossils, geology, uh, biology, and quickly came to the conclusion that evolution is a bankrupt view of origins, and I decided to put my confidence in the Word of God, the, the Creator God of the universe who was there at the very beginning, who recorded the creation right there in the book of Genesis, and I put uh, Darwin aside and decided to believe in Christ our Creator. Now, setting aside the atheist argument for a second, there's, there's even some disagreement among Christians who believe the Bible as to, for example, the age of the earth. Now, I personally happen to believe in a very young humanity that, that human recorded history dates back only about 6,000 years, uh, but maybe that the earth itself is older uh, maybe several billion years, and I, I don't have to subscribe to that. But also I saw that Pat Robertson, took uh, the founder of the 700 Club, took a swipe at Ken Ham this, this week, said, oh, you people who believe in a young earth are uh, embarrassing or words to that effect. What is your response, or did Ken have anything to say about that? Yeah. Uh, yes, Pat Robertson does not uh, accept a literal, straightforward uh, book of Genesis. And I understand where he's coming from because I used to believe in a very old earth. I used to believe that dinosaurs died out 65 million years ago, as Pat Robertson uh, believes. But then I looked at scripture and didn't see any room for ancient ages before, uh, before Adam. And also I looked at scientific evidence like a T-Rex bone being found, a Tyrannosaurus Rex bone being found in Montana that still had soft tissue and blood vessels in it. That creature did not die out 64 or 65 million years ago. That T-Rex was alive a few thousand years ago. So that kind of evidence helped confirm to me that the Bible teaches in Genesis a young earth and a young universe. So there is some scientific evidence of at least young dinosaurs. What does the Bible say about dinosaurs? Uh, actually, the Bible doesn't use the word dinosaurs per se. The word dinosaur was only first used maybe 170 years ago. But the Bible does describe creatures that we think could have been dinosaurs. Uh, but going back to Genesis chapter 1, in the, in the sixth day of creation, uh, God made all the land animals, all the land animals and dinosaurs uh, were land animals. And on that same day, day six, God created the first humans. So humans and dinosaurs uh, have coexisted. Then you look at the book of Job. There's creatures described there like behemoth with a huge tail. And Leviathan. And Leviathan, a sea-dwelling type of, uh, of monster. We believe, and we can't prove it, but I think that's circumstantial evidence that supports that dinosaurs and sea-dwelling uh, creatures like Leviathan have lived in the past few thousand years. Alongside of humanity. Yes. Well, it's, it's fascinating, and I do. there is some biblical evidence, at least, uh, that men and beasts like that 
which we don't really know what those what they were seeing when they described using those words, that, that they lived side by side in, in human history. Uh, so tell us a little bit about the Creation Museum. This is a family amusement park from what I understand. I've driven past it, didn't have the privilege to go in. How big is the Creation Museum there in Petersburg, Kentucky, a suburb of Cincinnati, Ohio, and why should parents bring their children this year and what, what describe the specials also? Yeah, the Creation Museum is, is a natural history museum. We take our visitors, including young people, on a walk through history according to the Bible. We start in Genesis chapter 1, end in the book of Revelation, and we want to show our visitors that you can trust the Bible in our modern scientific era. And our young people in particular uh, are our targeted audience because they're the ones who are going to uh, public schools going through secular science museums and, and watching National Geographic television programs and are getting an evolutionary worldview. We are the antidote to that. And accordingly, this year, children 12 and under can visit the Creation Museum, as you said, near Cincinnati, uh, free as long as there's one paying adult with them. It's a part of our, our, our program to reach out to these young people who are becoming essentially evolutionized, if you will. So in 2014, children can go free to the Creation Museum with the purchase of an adult ticket. Uh, how big is it and how many visitors do you have on an average year? It's a fairly large uh, museum, 75,000 square feet, very high tech. We have a special effects theater where people are actually sprayed with a little bit of water. The seats rumble. We have animatronic dinosaurs that move very, very uh, realistically. It's a fun place, but at the same time, there's a serious message that we're presenting that you can trust the Bible from Genesis all the way through the New Testament, but we're also very evangelistic. Uh, we present the gospel a number of times in the museum, and that's our ultimate purpose, that for the, for the uh, non-Christians uh, who visit, we want to present them with the message that you can trust all of the Bible, including why Christ came to earth 2,000 years ago. And for the Christians who visit, we want to embolden them in their faith and to give them answers to the skeptical uh, questions of the day. Fantastic. Our guest is Mark Loy with AnswersInGenesis.org. Again, your website, AnswersInGenesis.org. Do you guys have books or DVDs there? How can people support what you're doing? Well, in addition to coming to the Creation Museum, we have literally hundreds of DVDs, books, uh, curricula that defend the authenticity of the book of Genesis. It's the most attacked book of the Bible. We do have resources that also deal with the rest of Scripture, but because Genesis is so much under the microscope nowadays, that's where we uh, devote most of our attention. So if you're a parent or a homeschooler or uh, a teacher, you want to provide an option for children, listen, we're not mandating that creationism be taught in public schools, uh, but we, we think all sides of the story ought to be presented. The scientific evidence for both sides of the debate should not be excluded by people who come in with pre-existing pre uh, conceptions of what they think the truth ought to be. Thank you so much, Mark Loy, for joining us. Uh, Chaps, please pleasure to meet you. Give our greetings to Ken Ham and keep Thank up you. the good work you're doing at AnswersInGenesis.org. Thanks, brother. I'm Dr. Chaps, and we'll be right back. Making your voice heard in our nation's capital. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about defending the Constitution? Sign a petition today to defend your Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. You know, left-wing crazies go on these shooting sprees, but then the Democrats, like Joseph Biden, are using this as a pretext to take guns away from law-abiding citizens. Can you believe they literally want to publish the mental health records of military veterans so that they don't pass background checks so they can't exercise their rights when they come home? Senator Harry Reid, the leader, changed the filibuster rules, why? So he could stack the courts with gun-grabbing judges. Here are three of President Obama's nominees, Pillard, Millett, and Wilkins, couldn't get confirmed, but now they're on the court and they're allowing the DC police to fingerprint all law-abiding gun owners? That's not right. Sign a petition today. Defend your Second Amendment rights. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Do you care about defending the Second Amendment? Are the Democrats trying to seize your guns? Sign a petition today at PrayInJesusName.org. Democrat Senator Dianne Feinstein actually believes that stickers on windows and gun-free zones are going to make your life safer? That's really not true. Uh, we also know that Congresswoman Diane DeGette has confused magazines with bullets and is trying to ban both of those with these stricter gun control laws. But 
The Colorado sheriffs believe this is unconstitutional. And, and not only that, it's unsafe. A recent Harvard study shows that more guns actually results in less murders and less violence. And look what happened in England. Violence there soared after they banned guns, but here in America, violence dropped by 30% with more gun buying. Why, why is the government the only ones allowed to have billions of rounds of ammunition? I think we should defend your constitutional rights. Sign a petition today at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. We're joined again by Mark Loy of the Creation Museum in Petersburg, Kentucky, is Correct. it? Correct. Suburb of Cincinnati. And he's gonna talk about the new project they're building with the Ark Encounter. Picture this, you know, the, the big movie Noah is coming out. Uh, very exciting branding with, you know, Russell Crowe, this big actor. Everyone's gonna be thinking about the flood and Noah's Ark. What are you doing at uh, AnswersInGenesis.org? Well, indeed, in, in late March, uh, the Noah film is coming out with a lot of fanfare because it has Russell Crowe in it. It's going to be a, a blockbuster movie. One of our staff members has seen a preview of the movie and we're very concerned that it's not only anti-biblical, but perhaps there are elements uh, in there that are just so fanciful that it's a, it's a silly movie. But a part of our next hour Outreach is the building of this Ark Encounter, a full-size Noah's Ark located just south of Cincinnati. We've purchased 800 acres. We've designed the building. The money is coming in right now at a very, very good clip. Uh, we hope to have the Ark Encounter, the full-size evangelistic Ark and associated attractions open in two years. So unlike the Noah movie, uh Here's an opportunity for kids to walk into the ark, maybe, and, and see what Noah was building. You have high-tech animatronics and maybe some animals like, uh, like the dinosaurs, but and this time it'll be giraffes and I assume elephants or whatever. Uh, what is the ark going to look like and, and what can kids and their parents expect? Uh, well, it, it will be a full-size ark and inside the ark will have all sorts of exhibits that answer the most asked questions that people have about the ark and also the flood how many animals were needed how did noah and his family take care of those creatures uh, very high-tech exhibits uh, many of the animals will be animatronic that is uh, they'll move very very realistically similar to what we have in the creation museum but first and foremost as we create a fun experience at the ark encounter it's all about evangelism uh, the ark was after all a vessel of salvation for Noah and his family and the animals and the ark we're building, uh, Lord willing, opened in uh, 2016. Uh, it will be a vessel of salvation, a modern day uh, ark of salvation and that, uh, that uh, salvation message, of course, is the one uh, presented by Christ 2,000 years ago. That's right, and Jesus comes to save us from the consequences of our sins. Uh, just like, uh, you know, during Noah's day there was uh, obviously a lot of sin and that's why God sent the flood to destroy humanity but he provided the ark just like he provided Jesus Christ as a way for us to escape the destruction for our sins or we receive the forgiveness the atonement through the cross and you, there's a connection what you're saying is between Noah and the ark and the gospel of Jesus Christ which is presented at the museum. Yes, that too and the fact that, that Christ calls himself the door and we're going to have a door in the uh, in the ark uh, that will open and close throughout the day, symbolizing uh, Christ himself as being, I am, I am the, the door. So it's all about evangelism. It's not just some frivolous theme park. There are no roller coasters there. It will be fun uh, for, for young people and adults, but there are some serious uh, messages we're trying to, uh, to bring there, chaps. So one last question, Mark, before we let you go. What is the connection between this upcoming brand new ARC exhibit and the Creation Museum with all the dinosaurs that you and Ken Ham have built over the years? Right. Well, because questions related to Noah's Ark and Noah's Flood have been asked for years and years. We already have in our Creation Museum uh, many exhibits, including animatronic characters, that show visitors that you can trust what the Bible teaches there in Genesis chapter 6 through 9 about Noah's Ark and Noah's Flood. So people don't have to wait two years to come to the full-size uh, Noah's Ark. They can come to the Creation Museum now and learn that not only is the creation account of origins accurate as the Bible uh, uh, is the Bible uh, presents, but also its account of the flood and Ark of Noah. 
Thank you, Mark Loy, uh, with AnswersInGenesis.org. Thanks for coming on our show, and give our greetings to Ken Ham. Keep up the great work that you guys are doing. Well, blessings on you too, Gordon. All right, thank you. We'll be right back. This is PIJN News. Introducing FactsCongress.com. Do you care about politics, defending pro-life causes, traditional marriage, and religious freedom? At FactsCongress.com, you can create any petition to Congress, and we will convert your e-petition instantly to a real fax paper on your congressman's desk. And the best part? It's free. Want your voice heard by multiple congressmen? At FactsCongress.com, we can blast your petition to all 535 congressmen and senators instantly. And you don't even need a fax machine. <clears throat> Not only do we deliver your petitions instantly, but with our dashboard feature, you can quickly recruit friends on Facebook and Twitter to co-sign your petition. Do you care about a particular cause? You can build a virtual army of supporters at FactsCongress.com. Do you lead a church, faith-based organization, or PAC? We can even help you do fundraising. It's free. Just visit FactsCongress.com and try it out. Make a difference. Sign any petition today at FactsCongress.com. FactsCongress.com. Thank you so much, and our thanks to Mark Loy and Ken Ham, the Creation Science Museum, AnswersInGenesis.org. Uh, breaking news, after we got that interview, they announced a $72 million bond has passed and now the Ark Encounter will be fully funded in the months to come. Also, there was a press release by Paramount admitting the Russell Crowe movie Noah is not biblical. So at least there's out there with that disclaimer, they've spiced it up a little bit with some Hollywood fantasy, but if you want the real story, go back to Genesis 6 and Genesis 7, read that today. Please donate today. If you can, please visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Again, PrayInJesusName.org. We depend on your donations to keep this television show on the air. We don't have a $72 million bond. We need your small gifts, $20, $30, $50, anything you can do, please visit PrayInJesusName.org. Jesus said this in Luke chapter six, give and it will be given to you, pressed down, shaken together, running over, God will measure back to you by the standard that you use to measure to others. So do what you can to help. God bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his Ph.D. in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.